Lord, I will bow down and raise my hands to give you praise and worship you. To only you alone. Can you just say to the Lord, to only you alone I bow. To only you alone I worship. Only you alone is worthy of my praise. I lift my hands in praise of you. There is no other except you, Jesus. There is no other. To only you, Jesus. To only you. To only you. Receive our worship. Receive our praises in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we step into the corridor of God and we are faced with the mystery of divine reality as mortal men all the symptoms of our insufficiency begin to play out and one of the things that is needful for us to begin interaction and intercourse is the power of choice words you can actually touch his face with your words if you learn how to put your heart into your words and allow your words travel now we are going to practice that there are a lot of spiritual secrets that the believer picks up as he travels in pathways of the spirit you pour your heart into words words can travel and then the words become an extension of your heart and you can touch the face of God because of the desperate nature of the devil To extend his kingdom to manifest his memory and worship among men. It is needful as people under God to be trained on how to access our God and also how to move his hand in situations of emergency. One of the things that we have to learn by practice is how to pour your heart into words and let it travel you make a concoction of words from the density of gravity that is upon your heart and you send it on an errand you know those days there were no text messages no cell phones so if letters were to be sent there were What's the name of those birds? You write the letters. Yes, I know they are ravens, but there's a name they are called that is in connection to their function. And they release them. They hold those letters and fly miles, kilometers. And they send it to the man that is addressed you. You can pour your heart into words and it will travel for you. And so when my infirmity becomes heavy upon me and my limitation as a man comes with full intensity, I pour my heart into words. The man sending the letter has so much faith even though he doesn't see it delivered but he has poured his heart into words and there's a messenger that travels with it I wanted to go preaching Boko Pastor Anduna was expecting me suddenly in the night there was an attack and the attack was so intense in the spirit that he affected my health instantly 
fortunately for me my wife was in lagos that time and i i called her i said i know this one i've experienced it before now i need support from outside you know it's easy for you to deny as a man of god that you are struck sometimes <laughs> there's nothing wrong in being struck jesus was struck and so he called for external help i need pressure from your spirit make a concoction in words and strengthen me as she began to pray then i felt the heat on my chest that sign was sufficient to me that i will reach boko i almost died in the aircraft strength was failing but that i felt that heat still inside as I moved, I made my heart and I poured it into walls and I sent it. The closer we got to Boko, the stronger I became. <laughs> you know what I was doing? I had seen the end of my flesh. But what I was doing, I was coordinating it live from the spirit. You can actually defeat your flesh if you know what to do. This morning make a concussion and you see if your heart is not in it it's not powerful it's god's good will for a generation to rise up and correct the wrongs of our society but it is true that the extent of success we can achieve is dependent on the knowledge of God that the individual believer had captured. So I want to practice this spiritual thing. You can actually you can actually decide that your flesh will not control you, your body, the sickness that is inside. If you know how to concoct. And by the time I got to Boko, I was I was well. And we flowed in that meeting for went even to the mountain the next day prayed and it was a great time but in lagos my body had failed me and your wife saw it in in a vision and strength was she was putting her heart in words into words and sending strength came from different places and by the time i reached the city steps of boku i was full of the holy ghost and power not of my own making but there is power that broods in the realm of god that every one of us can take advantage of now pour your heart into words and touch his face Abba.
who has manipulated his good counsel. You are a wonder. You are full of power. You are full of majesty.
your mind back that moment when you were most vulnerable when the devil wanted to take advantage he wanted to destroy your destiny he came so close to you and it was, it was as if he will smash you he will give you a mark a scar but somehow he failed tell the devil devil you failed you failed you fail, you fail. He got you into a corner, and it was as if he would smash, but it wasn't given unto him. Because for thine is the kingdom, for thine is the power. He thought he would put you to shame. He came to kill, but he went out without the head of nobody. For thine is the power. Look upon that this morning and give God glory and praise. Look upon that this morning and exalt him. We thank you. We glorify you. We worship you. Some of us here, you even went as far as becoming a member of a secret cult. Secret, I mean an occult. Took oaths and tools from the devil. You were under his, his watch. His, his watch. But until you departed, he could not destroy you. Because the Bible says concerning a personality, he says, His is the kingdom. He says, His is the power, or the authority, or the sovereignty. At the end of the day, not everybody could die by witchcraft. Because His is the power. You remember when you were chasing women, chasing women in your home, everywhere. But the devil could not destroy you because it's not given unto him. His is what? Is a power. You remember the covenants that when your family marginalizing the destinies of men and you rose up. Say no. I make a choice and the devil could not kill you why it is not given unto him there is a personality in the heavens that has the right to power he decides who lives and who dies and he stretches scepter in your direction and say live 
let your neighbor live 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 only a king has that power and he stretched his scepter in your favor there are many things i think of that makes makes it easy for me to pour my heart into words have you seen the pattern in your family and only you now has been carved out as if you were not born from there don't you know the devil if he had the opportunity would have pegged you since some of you that were preparing you to be the oya the oya of your family with all the attendant secret covenants that holds the family together and while you were almost being initiated into the final level of wizardry the great one came and said i have work for you only him that is the power can do that i have business for you i've looked upon the land and no one else has this capacity come run an errand for me and then the elders will begin to curse begin to throw charm the more they throw the stronger you become For thine is a power. <laughs> they began to strike people in my family with madness from the firstborn. Madness from at the age of 21. The devil wants to give a mark that will be there for a long time to make reference to. But it came to pass. My whole family turned to the Lord. In 1994, he stretched his hand. He healed my two brothers of madness. On campus here, the spirit of madness came to invade me. That was when we fought in the night. And I struck that spirit. It came in form of a bed. An owl. I struck it. The reason why it came close is because he was not aware that I had weapons. There was no knowledge, no information. So he came close and I had the liberty to pierce it. Three days later, I'll tell you the last of my ancestors, the meekest man in the marketplace, he was affected by that door. He came to the doorpost and he fell face long. And that was his, the story of his demise. Why? For thine is the power. Maybe you are from a family deeply into witchcraft and you are here, you are afraid this morning. That this Jesus I'm following, can he? For I came from a worse place. Is you I'm talking to? You. Uh, no, not you. This guy. <laughs> Where I come from is more terrible. That's why my father changed my name. His name, our son name. There's no S. There's no S in the Igala alphabet. You know now. You know my name is not Igala. The son name. They change it. Those guys were the wizards that healed people. My people can talk to a tree and it will respond. You know, you know what I'm talking about. They can speak to a tree like this. It will talk. Before you approach anyone, you need to, you need to take permission from it. Oh, 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 oh. You are, not, you are not here. You need to beg it. You know. Only God can tell the story of redemption. How life can come out of death. For dying is the power. <laughs> you are afraid for nothing. You lose your sleep for nothing. We have seen the power of God. And it's on that that we stand. And the devil doesn't want us to say the truth. 
because I've seen Satan fall from heaven like lightning. I know you have seen demons. Me, a principality has come after me before. A principality. It was like a cat that was big, so big into the heavens. I was so little for it, it could have crushed me if he had the ability. It was not given unto him. He was the principality was not afraid of my tongues. I mean, he appeared. I think a time needs to come where we will we'll strip naked and tell you things that we have seen. He was high into the heavens. He was not afraid of my tongues. I prayed violently. But he could not crush me. There was something constraining it. For thine is the power. I cannot tell you that I fully understand how the spirit realm operates. I, I, I can't tell you. Every day when you come into that realm, you are, you are a student. But I know something, and I know this very well. There is a power there that every being in the spirit realm must bow to. Do you know? Just like we depend on God to give us bread, the devil needs to depend on God too for sustenance. Because if he withdraws his breath, everything will disintegrate. And so he's not so concerned that he is. It's just that he has ways of doing things. He has laws that bind him. He has decided to submit himself to those laws. On the strength of that, the devil has some time. But it's no concern of yours anyway. Because we have the power, the very power. Outside. Don't worry, you are liberty. You can rise. Go back. I want you to touch him finally before we move. You see, this is a worship service. A worship service is not a fast food joint. Where microwaves are. Microwaves and smoothies blenders are running. Worship is a process of ascendancy facilitated by the Holy Spirit to take us to high places. It's a journey that is destined to the altar where strange incense is manufactured. Everyone that has the Spirit of God in him has the right to touch him. Somebody worship the power, the power, the power of the realms, the power eternal, the power and the glory.
Kalala. Rake pota mina se, vovo noto, vovo noto, vovo shabe la penda, ipa pase kuma, paile bakama. They say you will trample upon snakes and upon scorpions, and there is a guarantee that nothing, nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing shall by any means, any means whatsoever hurt you. Those are the words of he that is called the power, the power, the power. I trample upon snakes, I trample upon scorpions because the power is on my side. I banish that fear, that fear that has made you a slave today, today, mount up with wings like him. It is your time. It's your day of manifestation. The word of God has been spoken over your life. There is a new beginning. Step into the terrain and reign in the name. cannot swallow you. Mount up with wings. Receive the grace of the Lord. Receive the power of God. that were previously closed and now open. The places where you failed, you will succeed. The places that you attempted and you did not achieve penetration. By the power of God, you are going to penetrate those regions, to penetrate those places, 
to penetrate those corridors in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise and glory. I saw a few people under the yoke of fear. Circumstances and situations were manipulated in order to minister fear to your soul and you have been carrying it out, around. I banish that fear. Who told you that your end has come? I banish that fear. Because after this time out, impossible things will become possible. Yes. And I speak in the name of him who is the power. I speak in the name of him who is the glory. You may be seated. You know, the day of Pentecost began from heaven and it connected with an activity that was triggered in the heavens. And if we are truly going to achieve a worship service, we will have to fuse up and align with and resonate along the frequency of the heavens. In that moment, everyone is fed by God. In that moment, the Spirit of God is released and supplied into every spirit. Then those that came in fearfully go with boldness. Those that came in sick go back healed. And those that came in confusion receive illumination. For such is the presence of God. In the book of John chapter 6, Jesus began to speak about the realm that he was used to, the realm of the spirit. In John chapter 6 verse 63, Jesus says, it is the spirit that quickens. Hallelujah. He said, it, 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 it is what? It's the spirit that quickens. I know you know the scripture, but my emphasis and what has drawn my attention this morning from that scripture is that the spirit quickens. And in my own opinion, I believe that Jesus was trying to uh, make us understand uh, the things that find expression in the presence of what? Of the Spirit. On the strength of that statement that Jesus made, we realize that there are several things that take place in the presence of the Spirit. Such things cannot take place outside of the presence of the spirit and just like you require a balanced diet for you to grow appropriately hallelujah i was in a bus sometime in lagos and one guy was selling some drugs supplements he took pains to explain how that not all the nutrients that we need for our body is found in the kind of food that we eat so we need to supplement that food with the drugs that he brought he was quite a salesman hallelujah sold his cargo because he could reveal how relevant they were now from his long discourse that led to bountiful sales i drew something it clicked on my heart that just like we need supplements and we need a balanced diet for our physical well-being we also need the recipe for a balanced spiritual life because Jesus said what it is the spirit that okay. in order for us to retain a consistent activity of the Spirit of God around our lives there are ingredients and there's a recipe that is recommended and if these things are not in your experience 
your spiritual life will not be balanced. And so the kind of things that take place when the spirit of God is present will not be a natural disposition. It will not be an experience that is sustained. You know, while what God sent was leading the prayer, when you finish, you know, I, I, I hailed you like a chief because it was God that was talking to you. He was supposed to pray for one hour. We said, no, no, no. The Lord has come on him. Leave him. Hallelujah. Leave him. Leave, leave that man. The Lord has come on him. You said... And you quoted that scripture directly. The Lord said, Sanctify yourselves today and tomorrow. For on the third day, I will do wonders in your midst. He was not doing wonders to unbelievers. He told his people, You guys get set, sanctify yourself. I'm going to touch down and I'll do wonders among you. Why did God feel the need to do wonders among his people? The reason is because one of the recipes for a balanced spiritual life is that you must be exposed to wonders frequently. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful. That's the first thing. Why wonderful? And in the Hebrew, the meaning of that is a bit deeper than our perception of it in English language. Because the word wonder in Hebrew is pala. Something that contains that which your mind can never comprehend. And every time that you are brought into that reality, that there's something larger than your mind. It is easier for you to surrender to the Holy Ghost. If wonder is not an ingredient around your life, there is a tendency that you are going to be strong in yourself, in your methods, in your understanding, in your ability. But God exposes us to wonder so that we can understand that our mind is limited. And that is one of the precursors that enable us to gain the ability to trust in God. In the Bible, there's a difference between a miracle, a sign, and a wonder. Are you with me? Because a miracle is an activity that takes place without the time element. You know, the principle that God gave after Noah's intercession in the book of Genesis chapter 8. Because Noah interceded and his intercession was clear. Because the animals that he used to sacrifice to God in making his prayer told us what he was praying. He took clean creatures and offered them to God as a sacrifice. Are you with me? And clean creatures are creatures that were not so much affected by the fall. They retained to a great degree the original manual in creation. So he sacrificed them to God and his intercession based on that activity was that he was requesting something from God. How that the fall did not affect these creatures so much. 
and now the earth has fallen it has lost its manual so by reason of this intercession let him hold some things constant so that life on earth can be predictable so that we that are upon the face of the earth will not be victims of this aberration so that if we interface with we can have a predict predicted and a predictable outcome that's why god says as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest i give you i'll be constant cold and heat will be constant summer and winter will be constant day and night will be constant but in all those factors mentioned you can only interface with seed time and harvest that's the only one you can influence But when there is a miracle, the time factor in that equation is removed. Have you read in your Bible when the prophet said it shall come to pass that the man that is reaping will overtake the man that is sowing? What's the meaning of that? It means the time factor in the equation was going to be violated. When you come into a service you have a condition and if they are going to treat you in the hospital it will take you about six months one year for you to get well and then you come into a service the healing evangelist begins to pray and then the time factor in the process is compromised and the healing takes place instantly that is a miracle a miracle is when time is suspended and eternity surfaces that which is real in god is manifest without the usual protocol that the earth observes did you get that that's a miracle men look upon it and they know that something stronger than time must have done this A sign points to something. It's a pointer. It's an indicator. A sign does not point to itself. It points to something other than itself. And Jesus said, if by, if by the finger of God I cast out devils. The interesting thing is not that devils are cast out. But the fact that devils are cast out is a proof that there is a superior kingdom to the kingdom of darkness that has come into the world of men so every time demons are casted out it is a sign that there's a superior kingdom around because the devil will rather want such a possibility to be hidden and i hope you know that under in the old testament demons were never casted out demons were only casted out in the new testament and there was nothing that showed the supremacy of the kingdom of God over the kingdom of the devil much more than what demons being instructed by the authority of the kingdom of light to go that's a sign that another kingdom is operational now do you get that but a wonder is far beyond all of this far beyond all of this a wonder results in a puzzle for the mind <laughs> and god in order for his people to live a balanced spiritual life he orchestrates circumstances and situations to bring some wonder into their lives are you with me now in this place we see the supernatural frequently you don't know what it has done to you when you go to a church where the supernatural is not present the way the people you understand what i'm talking about it is because they are not exposed to wonder and so their ability to believe an unseen god is weak and their capacity to trust his abilities and their measurement of his potency is epileptic.
And so God considers it necessary for him to come and display wonders among his people. Pala. Full of wonder. How can you explain? I was on the mission field in Kano. Preaching the gospel with Elijah in Kano. And then I received a call from Abuja that they just finished an aptitude test now and you passed. What's that? Your number is 144. I say it's wrong number. They say interview is in the next two days. But congratulations, you passed. You are number 144. So I put on my white suit and I showed up Merit House Abuja. Umbamba was sharing letters. He called me 144. I checked it. My name was spelled well. I looked, I was the only that was wonder. An evangelist in Kano never wrote anything but they say you did what so you know the next reaction no questions uh, leave it like that <laughs> there's no question at all how uh, don't think about it too much it will strain the mind they gave me letter of success uh, okay Say this is a game. Then I now went in the flesh to read, and that thing I told you yesterday happened. <laughs> went to collect some things, materials to read from a fellow that was reading. It was the only serious one in the hall. People were catching up. People were, ah, I know you, Uniben, Uniben. Hey, the guy was in a corner. He was not distracted. He was reading. So I felt he was the only reasonable person in the hall. Some people were eating burger. Some people had some crazy jeans up. They were just moving with a limp in the hall. So I saw somebody that looked, a Nigerian that looked. So I wanted to join myself to him. He said, And that guy failed the question that I answered. It means I took his place. There was one that walk that day. And the one that was sustained until the, the sun went down. I had not come out of the impact of receiving letter for the exam I didn't write. Then we now went to the hall. My brother-in-law trying to help me prepare for the exam printed many things from the internet that com complicated matters. So the guy that came to pick me from home to take me to the place for the exam now say, what's the name of the place? I told him. It's okay. What did you read? I told him. The question he framed that we discussed was the question that that guy failed. I answered it gallantly because a one that that was at work ensured that that would be the only question that i came out of the hall afraid sometimes you need to fear god sometimes is 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 a sign of spiritual health for you to be overwhelmed with the fear of god and that comes when you experience what He says, sanctify yourself today and tomorrow. For on the third day, I will come and do wonders among you. I said, one day we'll come here and strip. We will now tell you the things we don't normally see on the pulpit. God wanted to visit us. And he showed me a sign. And there have many witnesses here. I was holding a glass at home. We finished prayer. And the glass fell from my hand. And the glass hit the ground 
and it bounced. Bam, 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 bam. And it did not break. My wife is a witness. You were there. Bam, bam. Then I said, ah, what sign is this? Glass was bouncing on tires. It was a sign. So I had to go and search into it. What are you saying? Then he now told me of the battle that will come. He said, this time you will be hit, but you will not be broken. But the sign came how? A glass cup began to bounce. Sometimes you see some people, every time you see them, they are fresh in the spirit. They are in wonder. So when they come, they are in the right frame of faith. They don't see things from the perspective of beating and defeated men. That's what wonder does. It keeps you in the crucible of spirit, atmosphere, and realities. And so you don't even think like a defeated, normal, natural man with infirmities. How many of you were there when the glass cup bounced? As I speak, the hand of God is working. God spoke to me this morning that He's going to to help us. He's going to introduce wonder into our lives again. Amen. Wonder. He will introduce that factor. He will visit people, and He will introduce wonder. Then in your most natural disposition, you will be a man that is large and strong in spirit. Because God has factored into your environment wonder. It has adjusted your faith level. Your ability to trust God is, is strong. There are many times I walk into some meetings because of my interaction with God. You know, those days when we started moving the anointing, we give you a sign first. That sometimes you just come into a meeting. You didn't pray. But you know what? The faith is too much. The depth of faith is deep. You are not seeing the crowd. I and Enoch were going for a crusade in Nasme. I told Enoch, I did not even remember to pray for this meeting. I was just praying for the meeting that we're holding. And we went there. And when I stood on the pulpit, you know how I felt? I felt that there's no the sicknesses are too small for the God that I've come to know. That was how it started. And I was talking from that point. Just talking. And the power of God broke out. I was just talking. Just talking. Just talking. And people gave their life to Christ in numbers. Just talking. Just talking. That was where I was talking from. There's something that God does to you when He exposes you to what your mind can handle. That is when you truly begin to mount up with wings, spirit flight, an advantage begins to set in. Some witches, those days in Kano. They were operating for one tree and we located the tree. We now got angry and said, okay, thou tree, you have been inhabiting these people because of that. We deny you life. And the tree began to wither. And I was in Kano this year. The tree had died. Big tree. Dried from the root. He said that he's going to introduce wonder back so that his people can mount up with wings like eagles. Second thing, ingredient of a balanced Christian life is the technology of rest. Exodus 31.
Are you with me in Exodus chapter 31? Verse 15 says, Six days may walk be done. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he, sh he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. It is the way of spirits to rest. It is the way of spirits to require refreshing. Every spirit being needs to know how to rest. Every spirit being must know how to draw refreshing. For God did what? Rested. And was what? Refresh. That's the way of the spirit. Now let's build further. Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 43 the Bible says when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none so even the evil spirit when he's cast out his natural desire is for what rest so it is only the unclean spirit or the evil spirit that is not given the right to experience rest are you with me now and it is not as if they do not seek the rest they actually seek the rest but god has not made any accommodation available for demonic spirits to find rest But God has made accommodation for you, for your own spirit, to rest. And if you don't know how to put your spirit to rest, you will not know how to receive refreshing in the spirit. Because Peter said, times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Father. Is a spirit is a principle of spiritual rest that affords us the possibility of spiritual refreshing. Are you still with me? If you are here, hit say amen. amen. Ah, he's coming now. Fred, play the keyboard for me. He's coming. I want to entertain him. Hallelujah. It is spiritual rest that gives room to what? Spiritual refreshing. For the Bible says that after God had finished the work of creation, he did what? He rested and was what? Refreshed. So it is God's will for you to know how to experience rest in your spirit. And that is one of the ingredients of a balanced spiritual life if you want to see the spirit and his abilities in your life 24 hours in a day these are the things that you need to incorporate into it are you still with me now let us go to isaiah chapter 28 In Isaiah chapter 28, there is a statement that the prophet makes. I want us to make reference to it quickly before we switch into the New Testament. Now 
I've always desired, you know, haven't read books from Rick Joyner and all Jim Gaw, great prophets of our time, especially Jim Gaw, he's a seer, said that always tries to exercise himself in the spirit so that he will live under the influence of the spirit for 24 hours because there are several things that cannot happen until you are under the cloud of that of the spirit especially you cannot be quickened but in the spirit and i hope you know that if you don't experience quickening you cannot pray for the bible says quicken us and we shall call upon thy name so most of you are saying why is it that i'm not able to pray as much as this person as much as that person is because you don't know how to sustain the presence of God and it is that presence that has the ability to quicken you in the book of Isaiah chapter 28 from verse 9 he said whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little i think i need to explain this who shall he make to understand knowledge who shall he teach doctrine so not everybody can be taught doctrine but the ones that can understand knowledge as it obtains to spirit reality i know you know physics you know the law of gravity the law of buoyancy the law of up trust you know how things happen you know the laws of navigation principles of economics how to evaluate the viability of an economy how to stimulate an economy you know many natural things what is it there are laws there is knowledge about how the realm of christ functions There is knowledge about how the realm of God functions. It is that knowledge that gives us the ability to operate and to partake in things that are resident in the spirit world. And if you don't have access to that knowledge, you are going to live by natural knowledge and that is going to be a diminished and a miniature version of yourself according to God's expectation and so God says who shall learn this knowledge and unto whom shall he teach doctrine say first of all the people that can have this kind of advantage must be weaned from the breast that means they have drank the milk of the word of God. The new creation realities. This is what we are in Christ. This is who we are in Christ. This is how the corridor of Christ is. We need a revelation to know the things we have in Christ. That revelation comes because of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It is that spirit that enlightens the eyes of our understanding and causes us to see things the way they are in christ and the way things are in christ are different from the way they are in the natural when we see things the way they are in christ god is expecting us to adjust our natural disposition to accommodate those principles it is that movement from your natural setting to accommodate the spiritual profile of things that is called alignment and if you have achieved alignment in a particular matter the first ground from whence this alignment will be achieved will be your heart 
because that's where the eyes of your understanding are that were enlightened so alignment affects the core of your being and it brings you into orientation with the spirit template the factor that moves you into that alignment is that you stumbled upon knowledge that is only found in Christ that illuminates you and educates you about how God operates hallelujah it, 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 the scripture is making us to understand that if you do not desire deeper things in God you'll be stuck with milk you'll be stuck with new creation realities you'll be stuck with that doctrine that makes you think that God is owing you so your lot and your portion is to be receiving from God I have faith to receive you are still in milk and you can actually spend all your days on milk but the bible talks about men that have been weaned for me they have seen me if god has put all these things in store for us he must have something that he wants us to achieve and in order for you to achieve that you cannot achieve that by wanting just to do it in the flesh you must be brought into another curriculum of knowledge and he said that only those that have been weaned from milk can press sufficiently into where they can tap the knowledge that is knowledge indeed that even the scripture the written word of god if you have not entered that realm you cannot see the scripture because the way it is done in scripture is that those realities are fragmented in the scripture <laughs> you, you don't understand it the things that you will encounter when you press for that knowledge are they are in the scripture so but they are deeply hidden so that you need to go precept upon if you are not if you have not touched the original touch the reality you cannot find it in the scripture if you have not touched the thing in the realm you can't see it in the it's in the scripture true but if you have not touched it in the realm you cannot find it in the scripture because in order to see it sometimes you must you need to go here a little and there a little so a man that has not touched it cannot find that little is there the people that wrote by inspiration encountered those things and they wrote by those things and as they wrote it was not written in a sequential manner that is step number one this is step number two because the spirit realm is not structured like that the spirit realm is not structured according to logic structured according to life you will have to be drawn from breast and brought into life to have intercourse with those realities then the eyes are enlightened and say, oh it is here a little it is there a little it's on this line and it's on the other line sometimes you need to go wide to see it sometimes it is close together and men rush and never get to see it the fact that you have a have you not seen a professor in your department those days is that what you want to be like the guy has gathered knowledge but the knowledge is not blessed so the more of it we receive he looks like like a cartoon creature especially the ones in science i don't know about your own but in science you see this lecturer comes with two glasses one you put one and put another one his note is in german so he will come to class and be interpret translated why not go home and just translate it eh? he comes every day and will tell us you see it's in german it's in german who wants to learn your german <laughs> oh my god what? We are even talking about French. You are saying German. Who wants to even learn it? Say my notes are in German language. Oh. And with the increase of that knowledge, there's no advancement. It's as if the knowledge is cost. But there is something called the blessed knowledge. And when you reach out to it and you receive it, everybody wants to be like you. Because it radiates. The knowledge itself radiates with the glory of the one that is known. 
and until you have touched it you cannot find it in the scripture and the prophet said there's something beyond milk my people don't want to be weaned from breast and there is a knowledge there is a doctrine that men need to learn hallelujah sometimes you need to travel to revelation and to exodus to see the shape of that realm he just formed a little in exodus formed a little more in revelation and only a man that has entered into that corridor can see it ah this is the dimension of the tower that i entered exodus testifies about it the walls of moses reveal it it means moses was there too yes, sir. so if you don't know what you're looking for you will never find it in the bible and I speak as a man that has done carnal study of the Bible for years. Carnal, and I still invite you for carnal studies. Because the carnal studies will be a foundation. Because the, the word of God itself is a revelation. It was revealed. Hallelujah. <laughs> but when I began to enter into corridors, the scriptures are no longer 2D. They are 3D. They are spirit. They are life. And it welcomes us into those corridors. And when you have seen those things in the spirit, you can now find them in the scriptures. You get it? Now, one of the things that can be found is what he reveals to us here. To whom he said, wait for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line here a little and there a little for with the stammering lips and with another tongue will i speak to this people to whom he said this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing those two words mark those two words this is the rest and this is what the refreshment but what will a kind of man do he say ah, but they will not what they will not it says that in the realm of the spirit there is a new tongue that's what we call speaking in tongues but there is something attached to it that is a bit different from our perspective of it he calls it what a new tongue not tongues now when you are baptized with the holy spirit and you speak in tongues a time comes when a, an added unction comes upon you it will produce what a new tongue Spiritual rest and refreshing is affordable when a new tongue comes upon you. So those of you that is bo 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 ba ba bo 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 bo, you are far from rest. He said this type. Hallelujah. This is the rest. And this is what the refresh when Jesus said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak in what new tongue is that new tongue that he spoke about not tongues new tongue in the Greek they went a bit deeper and they called it fresh tongue a tongue you know there's a prophet that said since he gave his life to Christ and God baptized in the Holy Spirit he has not spoken the same tongue that is a lie what we are talking about in the tongue is not a new vocabulary but a new what tongue it is in the Greek that we understand it better because it calls it kayanos tongue Kayanos means new or fresh. For those of you from Otupa, 
Let me see your hand up. You are from the Otukpa side. There's pan wine there. You must have heard that the fresh pan wine is stronger. Is it true? You may not have known it experientially. <laughs> but it's common knowledge that what fresh pan wine has stronger intoxicating ability. Why? It's new. It is fresh. And that is what happens when you speak in tongues out of a new impartation. The, the energy that is generates that it generates is fresh energy. And it doesn't need to be a different vocabulary, but it's coming out of a new unction, a fresh impartation, a new anointing. Now, if we move in the miracle session, some people will speak that tongue. It's not necessarily new in utterance, but it comes fresh. It is that that brings refreshing. But only people that are weaned from the breast can seek the corridors where new tongues are given. Every time you are held up by life's challenges and you are bl blessed as much as to receive a new tongue, it diffuses it. It sets your soul in peace and freshness. It's as if you are renewed. It's as if you are born anew. A lot of us need to exercise our spirit much more than we do in order for you to mount up and go beyond the clutches of circumstances and failures that want to rewrite your destiny. If I preach for a while, I go into the incubator. Now, it's, it's, I can get into the new tongue faster now because I depend on it. Say, this is the rest. It's not another thing. Say, herein lies what? The rest and what? If you don't get refreshing regularly as a minister, you can start getting attracted to a woman that is not your wife. The old anointing is still operating on. Because that fresh impartation comes with the ability to sanctify you. It sanctifies and separates you. Anytime you begin to see that lust has come, it's a proof that you are, you are not fresh again. And the devil has mastered your old mode. And he's, he's planning with that dimension in mind. Why not press further? When a fresh impartation comes, what happens is that you become a new person. Because the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you shall be what? Changed into what? So he will have to study you afresh to create temptation for you. Because because of that impartation you became a new man. You can become a thousand men in your lifetime. And you need to continue research in his lab every day because of Victor. He has planned, but overnight, Victor received an impartation. And he's a new man by tomorrow. And those of you, those young damsels that like you attach yourself to a minister, say, Kai. And you go there and you'll be, because he doesn't drive you. Hmm? Every time he comes, you go there, you spend four hours, five hours. At that time, the person is suffering from an old oil. And you are trying to complicate his situation by coming for five hours. He doesn't have the will to drive you. He's weak. So you are not saying his vision, you are sharing that you saw an ox. Please leave, don't kill that man. Leave that man alone, please. Please, Allah. No, they got you are not. Please help me preach. So, say uh, leave him. Leave him. Because in that state, his soul is active. Because the oil is not fresh. He can still preach a good sermon. You still be blessed. But he himself has not rested. 
If you don't know this, you don't know when to run from counseling. Don't counsel when you have not rested. Yes, sir. Suddenly, you just discover that you don't like your wife again. If I don't like you, I won't tell you what I'm telling you. And don't, as a preacher, be, hey, don't lose the virtue of sincerity. You are already a dead man. Don't hide under where, what you preach in, in Lokoja. When you notice that you are like another woman is old or yeah, you need what? A fresh tongue. You need rest. Notice that the Bible said this hearing is the rest, but they will not hear. The flesh has tendencies to turn away from that solution. But you need a new tongue for a balanced spiritual life. If I catch any of the sisters, maybe we invite a minister and you come there, you are spending four hours. I will use cane to beat you physically. Say you are we come the first day you are in the room for counseling you are seeing visions of oxes i just know that your own case is a physical problem where we came you from that place when the man is is the devil is striking he's weak his will has been captured but you'll be claiming that yeah, your vision is sweet ah you suck eh, you suck an axe no it's your will your will has gone bro it's not the vision you are getting attached to the young damsel I will find him leave him alone you know we suffer so much as young preachers but he said I saw you in the heaven Go and read your book. <laughs> Go and read your book. <laughs> Show you in heaven. Which heaven? I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm in Lagos. I'm, no. I'm in Lagos. Tell your neighbor, please. You need a fresh tongue. In the name of Jesus Christ. You need what? Fresh. Sometimes I travel from Lagos just to join because the, the tongue has, is old. So I had to join the brethren to pray with them again. And while I'm standing with them, a fresh tongue. I, all of, that's enough for me. I can go back to Lagos. Sometimes it's as if witches invade my apartment in Lagos so that I will not penetrate. Nope, I have another home. I can pay money, the last money. When we are praying like that, I just I take a bath in spirit waters. And just in case you were planning me from Lagos while I'm coming back, park before I come. I have rested. My hands on the axe now is is, is. and as a man of God, you need rest frequently. And don't play about it you will just cleave to a sister before you realize it finally i would have gone further on this into first corinthians to show you paul's lifestyle he was a man that always rested what i got from what benjamin said he said wait me i got rest when you finish resting, then you can mount up. He said, There that wait upon the Lord. What will happen to them? They will do what? They will do what? They will mount up with wings like eagles. You know, a lot of people are expecting that since we are young people, we'll get involved with women and let's prove them wrong. For a thousand years, we'll prove them wrong. I found out that you can mount up. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. Finally, you need power. 
for a balanced spiritual life. And ye shall what receive. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He will be my witnesses <laughs> in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the outermost part of the earth. A man that has power, people locate your, your address with that complimentary card. Your phone number, they just find it. Say, I'm, my name is Bayo. Bayo, we have never seen. How did you get my number? Say, I got it from somebody. The address and the location of power is known in the land. God said, I don't know there's evangelism work to do, there's so much to do, but wait, tarry. You need to be endued with what? With power from on high. What gospel are we preaching that doesn't have power? That's a lecture. And today, you receive power. I don't have time because of the time to teach you. The real thing I wanted to teach is power. Power. How that every one of us can have power. You need power in the office. Power at home. You need power on the street. You need power while you are sleeping. That's the one I found out recently. That when you sleep, the witch is around, gather. I say, okay, let's kill him. Sleeping with my wife on the bed. Was I awake or asleep? I don't know. But I saw a door in my room that I did not build. And when I looked through the door, it was night, but when you looked through the door, it was daytime. Ah. And I saw one Baba far. He had his skin back, and he, he was looking like this. <laughs> What's the name of that bag? Aurata. <laughs> Jesus. In one second, Baba was already at that door. He was far out. But in one second, he was at the door. He wanted to put his head. I said, ah. So I don't say, I kill you in the name of Jesus. And I didn't know it. I said it physically. And while I said that, my spirit left my body with an axe. Where it came from, I don't know. Before I got there, Baba did like this and he, he had wings on his hand to fly and his his first attempt at flight positioned him where for the axe <laughs> tell your neighbor you need power <laughs> so when the next day the say fulani is coming and say no i killed baba i killed him he can't come can't come. I, I fought Baba. If Baba had subdued me, full and he would have come. They were carrying load and running. I said, no. A man such as me cannot run. No, it's too late. It's better let me die. It will strengthen you more. That our leader was there and he died. Hey! More people will be ready to die. I like that kind of death. I like that death. Our leader, he was there, gallant, and they struck him. He was still cursing. He was proclaiming the kingdom. They struck him. He, he was. Many more people will that the full army will run away. My death, the anointing will come on more than twenty-five people. Run? No, not now. If my death will, will do better than my life, I will give it. Some strange men will rise. <laughs> they couldn't take us off in canoe because when you kill one, the anointing falls upon another. When you pierce, it falls on ten. They had to advise themselves to stop killing because we were becoming stronger. 
who told you that Fulani can take us out? But what you need is what? What you need is what? Can you rise on your feet? Listen to me. You will receive power this morning. The armies of the aliens must be put to flight. The people that killed your father cannot succeed on your life. The people that killed in your family cannot succeed in your life. Lift up your right hand and ask him for power. Nothing will be able to stop a man that has a balanced spiritual life. He does not see the limitations. He does not see the things that hinder. He sees the power of God. Nobody can remove us from the Lord that God has planted us. No man. Whether he fights with bomb, with spear, with bow and arrow, no man can take us from the land that God has planted us. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall be lifted. From off your neck, and the Lord shall be destroyed because of the
in Jesus name brothers and sisters in the midst of all the trouble in the land the great one says he comes he comes and damage shall be done to the camp of the enemy because he comes he comes and the people shall be made strong the base man shall be made a warrior because he comes he comes and the fruitful field shall be a forest the fortunes of the land shall be restored the heavens shall be open and he shall bring redemption to his people he comes say the lord he comes He comes. No man born of woman can drive you out of a land that God has planted you. His sovereignty will fight. He will fight with thunder and hailstones. He will smite and he will slay. And the wounded of the Lord shall be many. He comes to bring salvation unto his people. In a moment of time i want you to lift up your voice and pray for the land and say come lord jesus come with power come with might he comes he comes he comes close to you and begin to pray faith into that life. No, two by two, two by two. Pray into that life. Pray into her spirit. Pray into his spirit. Banish every fear. Banish every fear. Banish the fear.
lift your right hand up and close your hand. For a little one shall become a thousand. Small one shall become a strong nation. We banish that fear that is over this land. The fear that have been casted upon us through sorcery and through witchcraft. We turn that cloud of darkness backward, 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 backward in the name of Jesus. We banish this abomination from our land. We command your wicked sorcery to fail. Let the terror of God invade your camps in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, oh yes. We command you to turn backward. Turn backward, turn backward, turn backward. By the fury of God, by the fire of God, by thunder, by brimstone, by fire, turn backward. Now you can receive the power of God. Just lift that hand. Aha. Okay, Zita. Play. Stop playing. There is a deposit that will come upon you. Now, there are 12 people that heaven will break out on right now. Then I'll stop. I will not go beyond that. I will not go beyond the 12. Now, ushers, help me now. Ushers, help me now. There are 12 people. The hand of God will come upon them. 12 people. 12 people. Inside and outside. 12 people. It's already coming. It's coming. Strong. Ushers, just help me. Help me. If the people fall close to you, just help me bring them. Father, those 12 people in this hall. Let your hand descend upon them. Let your spirit descend upon them. Let your finger descend upon them. Let your finger descend upon them. Twelve people. He shall receive power. There are twelve people. Twelve people. Twelve people. There are 12 people. 12 people. 12 people. outside can join us inside father you say 12 people we have four people here locate the eight people locate the eight 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 locate them 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 Look at them, look at them, look at them. Father, we have seven people here, but you say twelve people. Put your hands upon the rest and look at them. 
Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. some here. Oh yeah. Stretch your right hand towards me right now. Father in the name of Jesus, those among the eight, twelve that are here, locate them, 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 locate them. Holy Ghost, 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 Holy Ghost. Help me bring them. Help me bring them. Bring them from outside. Bring them. Bring the sister from outside. Bring her. Bring her. It is a day of empowerment. There shall be no feeble in the land. No weak among God's people. For he brought them forth with silver and gold. And there was no feeble among their tribe. I have seen that God will need many apostles for this work, for this revival. I'm seeing it. There are seven apostolic roles that will be released right now. But before we do that, can you stretch your hand towards the monks, central monks, and curse it? Curse that monks. Curse that monks. We shut you down. We shut you down. We shut you down. Shut that much down. We cut it down, we cut it down. 
We cut it down in the name of Jesus. We shut it down. We shut it down. We shut down with sorcery. We shut down with witchcraft. We shut down the spiritual satellites. We shut it down. We shut it down. We shut it down. In Jesus' name. Now, there are seven rows. And that is whether or not you are called into the office of the apostle. What is the mantle of the office? And you can receive it. The mantle of the office. Come. You, you have one. Come. Come. We will know the power of that rod from you. You have one. I have. Pray to receive it now. Some of you have been given a new life. A new life comes upon you. In your pastoral ministry, you will see the apostolic wisdom and power. And so God will release one of the mantles into your hands. And your ministry will change. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, You have served as a pastor in the, under the shepherd's unction for long. But from today, let the grace and the mantle, the grace and the mantle, the grace and the mantle of the apostolic realm function in your life. With power, with signs, with wonders, miracles, with healing, and mighty deliverances, even displacement of territorial spirits and demons, receive the authority to stand as such. In Jesus' name. Father, let those people those people Lord ordained for the six other mantles let your wind blow it into their spirit 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 right now. Blow it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Chris, come. You have chosen. All these years you have operated as an intercessor. <laughs> Receive a cloak. A cloak that will make you a master in the issues bordering on spiritual authority. Bordering on government and establishment. Let the grace and the Power of God reveal this realm upon you, upon you, upon you. 
a cutting edge anointing marked with great signs and wonders from today in the name of Jesus lift up your hands as we pray today if you are sick in your body put your right hand there if your child is sick lay your hands lay your hands cloak receive the cloak and the mantle father we banish every sickness that is present here in the bodies of people i command the sickness to go bring it is the mantle i'm talking about to bring that the power of God will be so manifest that bad people bad hair will grow on bad hair that's what I'm hearing I'm hearing that people that have lost a tooth that the teeth will grow out he said that's the kind of power that we should begin to expect from now he said there will be signs he said there'll be wonders and he says some among us we carry those signs literally and without a prayer meeting or a church meeting the anointing will begin to produce results it will begin to manifest obvious signs and wonders the power of god will be in manifestation even places that 
weeds don't grow grass that power will make those places fruitful again there is a measure of that power in this hall there's a measure of it that's what I'm that's the power it's just that I don't want to break the tears there's something is bubbling it's bubbling okay come 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 it's bubbling inside we are not making it's not cunningly devised fables I am talking of power power coming into the land Receive the mantle. The mantle. And as we get back to Enugu, let signs, wonders, and miracles accompany your ministry. In the name of Jesus. Aha! I see a fierce angel in the spirit accompanying you from today to confirm your words with signs and with words. Kaba 
hairs will grow out. Grow out. Grow out. Just in case you have lost a tooth and no, it will grow out by the power of God. The Lord said, there will be so much power that it will be difficult to differentiate who is pastor and member. Everyone will carry the power of God and the terror that will come into the land will be much more than the full and he has created. In the villages, in the countryside, the power of God will bring many people together to worship God. Idols shall be forgotten. Nameless people, faceless people, people that have never produced a priest, a pastor. Suddenly, the Holy Ghost will come upon them and they will prophesy. God is about to visit this land. He's about to come. And he will begin with you. He will begin with your family. He will begin with your local government. Even those people that have served the devil before. You are going to be first on line. God will put an anointing upon your life. And the same thing that worked in you to spoil the lives of men will work in you to raise the dead. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. The ones that have risen up, they have cost you. Their utterances shall fail. And something new will begin from you. Do not despair and say, it has taken so long. No. God has been building the structure. All these years of silence and something will break forth that you can no longer contain in your parlor that's what he says I should tell you <laughs> you'll be praying in your parlor quietly he say what is coming you can't contain it there it will move you out it will embarrass you in the market something that you never planned a sovereign thing will break out and it will be the beginning of miracles in your life will count for nothing. He said, Behold, I do a new thing and it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Shall ye not know it? Shall ye not know it? For I will make a way in the wilderness. Maybe the name of your family is associated with sorcery and witchcraft. But in that same place, he said, I will make a way. I will make a way where there is no way. I will make a way in the wilderness. Cause rivers to flow in the desert. The least among us will be as strong as David. And so we hail you. We magnify you. For you are triumphant and great. And there is none to be compared with your name. Holy, eternal, strong, and mighty God. Our generation calls to you. Our people need you. For the wastings of the enemy has made us remember our God. And we are fully turned to take hold of the horns of the altar. Awake suddenly like a man from wine and bring deliverance to us. I see God entering into Boko. And there shall be a little sound in Boko. And many will despise this sound for it is little. 
and it shall linger for a time in a little form. Wise men will seek it, but many shall despise it because it is little. And it shall come to pass in the fullness of his causes that it shall be multiplied. And it shall go forth with much healing and much deliverance. And the fame of this river shall be known in the land. Many that serve idols will seek to protect their territory by fighting against the river. And the river shall slay many. It shall bring many back into the dust. In order that it might pave a way for the people. And it shall water the entire land. And the land of Boko shall prosper again. These are the words I hear from the Lord. prosperity back to the land like in the days of old. The scourge of poverty on it shall be lifted. Many shall resort to it. For many things will be manufactured there and produced. And a lot of commercial activity will be activated. The scourge of poverty, the scourge of poverty on the land shall be taken away. He said, this shall be my doing. And it shall come to pass swiftly. And it shall not tarry. I hear in my spirit. You see, awake. Awake, 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 awake. Thou that sleepest. For even in this hour, I make an entrance into your land, said God. Awake, awake, put on your strength, trim your lamps of intercession and supplication. For even in this hour, I do visit your land and your people. He said, Awake and weep not, turn unto the horns of the altar. For I will come as a bright light, and darkness shall fade away. I hear those words in my spirit. I'm not wasting time. I've, I've tried to stop this service for long. But I'm seeing seven ladies that are going to be intercessors for, for lifetime, for their lifetime. Seven ladies. God will hold you on the leg as I speak. Father, you know I'm weak now. But you say that there are seven ladies among us of whom you shall bless with a spirit of supplication and the spirit of intercession i'm seeing some garments come from heaven for some of you it will look as if you are in labor pains because the the the, the spirit will be so strong on you so strong to be so strong upon you as if you are experiencing labor Ha <laughs> Mu pakadi senekedi le konde ezeke mereke tima. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. You come. Just look me in the eye. I'm with you. Look, look me in the eye. Eleke de sakori amama sike. Iako mama ne se kama. Jesus is calling you. Where is Quado? Quado. Eleke de, Eleke de, Eleke de, Eleke de, Eleke de, 
He'll put fire in your womb. He'll put fire in your womb. Your assignment is to cry. Where is Bernard? Pascal. You will cry for the Lord. He will put fire in your womb. A mantle. From where I come from, we clothe you. <laughs> In spiritual things. I see that you have the ability to carry what I carry. Let, let all of it come upon you in every major and brilliance and shade and color, in utterance, in power, in wonders, in signs, in leadership, in government, in administration. sons and daughters are prophesied. The old men shall dream dreams. For I will pour out my spirit. Friends, it begins. And it begins with you. For the new day, the highway into your family, into your office, you will pave that way by the power of God. God says, I should tell you that you should not look down on yourself anymore. For you will be his vessel. You will be his messenger. You will take him from place to place. He will move in response to your prayer. shall no longer tire. Thank you, Father. If you can, you may be seated quietly. These are the words of God. Some of you will leave this meeting and you will, experience, you will meet the miracle you have been expecting at home. You will leave McCordy back to your station. 
and suddenly you will meet the miracle of ushers let the offering baskets go round. please endeavor to cast a quality seed the financial burden of this meeting has gone beyond what we planned for so endeavor to cast a quality seed to enable us fix all the things that need to be fixed There are many ladies in our midst that God will seize your womb. He will put fire inside. He will put fire. Fire inside. And then he will give you the responsibility to deliver fire. Some of you for three days you will not be normal. You won't be normal because there's something in the womb. There will be a strong demand for purity in your life. Strong demand. The loss will be coming, but will, something will constrain you. Because you have been chosen to be one of the virgins of the altar. God will release fire into your womb. You look down on yourself too much. God has chosen you. Father, I want to ask as a sign, release a little, small of the fire on her. Let her test it so that she will understand it. Release a little, just a little, just a little, just a little. Okay, it's coming on you. Just a little. He said, Don't run again. Don't run again. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Some of us, when you are done with school and you are through with your certificate, he will appear and he will begin to fight for it. I know that's a very big fight. But he will stage the fight in such a way that you will not be able to win. I'm not saying don't fight, fight. But the way the fight will be, you will not win. The lives of many people will be shaped. Many people, their lives will be shaped. There are two ladies among us that God had chosen as vessels. There will be prophesiers, 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 vessels that have been chosen from God. And as I speak, the anointing will begin to come on those two ladies. Father, in this hall today, let the heat increase. And let your hand descend upon the two ladies that you said they, were, they are going to be prophesiers. Holy Spirit, spread your hand over this congregation. Spread your hand. Spread your hand. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them, locate them, locate them, locate them, locate them. You see, if it were my words, he would not confirm it. That we alter the mind of God. You cannot run away from it. It has chosen you. You did not choose it. It chose you. They are prophesiers. They will walk in the gift of prophecy as easily as you breathe. 
such is the nature of this calling. It's like fire in the womb. <laughs> Receive the talking and the grace. Yes, let your womb be shot, let fire be shot inside. The gospel that we will preach now is no longer in words. It's with the demonstration of the spirit. And one of the things that I'm hearing that God will do is that we'll have great authority over charm, which all those things that they do. Great authority. Let nobody panic when he sees charm anymore. Do not panic when you come in contact with a witch anymore. The tables have turned. The tables have turned. The tables have turned. Take that child. Take that child away. The tables have turned. The tables. The tables have turned. The tables have turned. Begin your new works, your fresh works. Begin them, begin them, begin them, begin them, oh God. There are four people. There are four people that I'm seeing. You will be very wealthy. The anointing to make wealth will come upon you so much for the purpose of the kingdom to advance the cause of God. Four people sitting here. That anointing right is upon you. He said, Weep not, O daughter of Zion. He said, do not be dismayed. For at no time did I forget you. At no time did I abandon you. But I come afresh in this season. That I quicken the candlelight in your heart. And I will show you strange things. Your eyes shall behold my mother. Awake, awake. Awake, 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 oh, hand of God. As I'm walking around, what he's doing is, he's imparting people, releasing them into their destiny. His spirit is coming upon them. Kailemo Sandabala. You cannot run from him. No, not in this time no sickness will be able to stand his blazing power no sickness
we wait to see your face we wait to hear your voice we will stay by the river we wait we wait to see your face we wait to hear your voice Hillary where are you? Jesus is calling by the river we wait to see your face. We wait to see your voice. We will wait, we will wait by the river. We wait, we wait to see your face. We wait to hear your voice. walk with him but when the conference is over you'll be sensitive to know when the volcano needs your attention for the new walk with the walk lord walk upon there the new walk give him praise and give him glory Exalt his name. We will wait on you until you make us strong. We will wait on you until you change our name. Things will never remain the same again.
praise one more time. Let's worship you. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. 